I'm going to talk to you about a couple of the Edge guys. Thibodeau, who I'm really growing fond of the more I watch him. Actually, as people are saying he's plummeting, I'm learning more about him. Listen, confidence, whatever it is, you know, that's that's for the teams in the meetings to, to gauge. I, unless you're in those meetings, you don't know what kind of kid this guy is. Okay, he seems like a good kid. He seems like a, a kid who's ready to work. Um, you know, as, as I think Emmanuel Sanders said on Good Morning Football, like I'd be more worried about that attitude if he were a quarterback. Um, you have to be supremely confident. I wasn't a guy that always exuded supreme confidence outwardly, so I think that's kind of fucking cool to be a guy like that. I kind of wish, you know, that must be cool to be like, I'm the best in the draft. Like, good. And honestly, if I could run around like Thibodeau, I might feel that way as well. My only thing about him is he's going to have to put on more weight. Like, I don't think, you know, at a one five nine ten 10-yard split, um, he's a bit of a short strider. Like, I think he's going to have to play with a little more power than he might think. But golly, he runs underneath his body really well. He's very under control. He's very athletic. He's very, his feet plant in the ground and they're, they're there. He's not sliding. He's not slipping. He's good at the top of the rush. Ankle flexion. Um, he probably has good ankle flexion. I'd have to watch him more. His finishing ability is really good. And he also blows up some run plays. I think he's very twitchy. I mean, like, the question for me is, for a guy who's got a ton of upside, is he going to meet an NFL coach his first year that's going to develop him? Because as he has, like, one of the strangely highest floors of any of the players, like, because I think that would kind of go counter to what people talk about him like, but I think his floor is relatively high because of how twitchy and athletic he is. And the fact that he hasn't, really learn how to rush yet, dude. I look at this guy's hands, and I'm not throwing shade at the kid, this is actually a compliment. When you look at him, like, I was very polished coming out. Aiden Hutchinson's very polished, right? That's a word you keep using. Like, hand usage is a way that a player can get a lot better, and I think Thibodeau, like, when he puts his hands on people, yes, sometimes he'll run them the fuck over, and you can see how heavy-handed he can be, but sometimes he's just laying them on people without a real plan. And um, I think if he encounters a really good defensive line coach, the ceiling for him is so high, I might be apt to bite the cheese on that one. And, you know, so far, uh, people have questioned his effort. I'm not worried about that. That's definitely something you, you have to rely on the player to bring. But at the same time, if you're the coach and you can't get that out of a player, then how good of a coach are you? Like, I, I know that you can't coach effort is, is like the old adage, but you can coach effort. You can emphasize effort. And if you've got a, a, a D-line room where that tone is set by veterans and by people that, that bust their ass every day, like that kid's got no choice. So the worry I have about Hutchinson is he's got length without length of arm. His arms are 32 and an eighth. Like he's b- below 50th percentile in arm length. And as a guy who's battled with these guys, who's not, you know, I'm not like a low to the ground tank like a Brandon Graham. It's tough and you have to have leverage and if he's six foot seven, that's great, but it's for nothing other than PBUs if he can't A, play with leverage, and B, play with length. So I worry about that, but I also think he's got a high floor as well. He's very good with his hands, no question. But, you know, like you do worry a little bit about some of the games where you talk about a Georgia where he's playing like big pro style bodies and the advantages that he might have had in the Big Ten at times didn't show up as much. I don't want to judge a kid off one game. Again, really like both these kids in different ways. And then Carl Loftus, here's a guy that reminds me of Brandon Graham, dude. He reminds me of a taller Brandon Graham. And that's not necessarily a good thing, not because Brandon Graham's not awesome. It's because how, a taller Brandon Graham is not Brandon Graham at all. Brandon Graham's height, his leverage, is it's so important to him. And listen, I know, uh, he, he ran a 477 and opted not to run at the combine. He ran a 477 in his pro day. I'm I'm joking. I don't mean fire that agent, but maybe fire that agent, because Purdue doesn't even have a fucking indoor. Evidently, they're out there in a in a hailstorm, or whatever tougher. it was, and he's running a four seven seven. I'm not worried about his straight line speed. I'm not worried about his athleticism. I think sometimes when somebody doesn't fit a body type, we wonder if they're athletic because they don't have these thin hips and everything. But like he's an athlete. He's just got wide hips. Like he's a tank, and I, I'm not really sure if he's going to be a top of the rush guy at the next level. But he reminds me of of a little bit of BG, which is which is exciting to me. So you know, when people say he's not an athlete, I think it's lazy. Is he the kind of athlete that's going to fit in today's game? Well, 
I don't know. It depends on how well you can use him in different spots and where you pick him up because I think he's going to make somebody happy depending on where he's drafted. But you have to be able to to use him inside, you know, maybe move him down. Like he's going to be – there's more guys unlike him than there are like him in today's NFL. And I think that's in a lot of ways that changeup is – BG is such a changeup. Somebody who's really built the way he's built is such a changeup. He's a real stocky built, like wide built guy. Um, and he carries that 266 um, and plays with it like powerfully as well. I mean, it's not like he's a finesse player in any way. Hey, you want to talk about a leverage demon? You want to talk about Joshua Pascal out of Kentucky? Six foot three, 268 pounds, 4.77, 40 yard dash. His arms are 33 inches long, PG County, Maryland. I like Josh PG Pascal. County, Maryland guy. Yeah. Out of Kentucky. Get, the guy that's that's climbing everybody's draft, you know, uh, draft board is this kid at Georgia, Walker, Trayvon Walker. And boy, do I like Trayvon Walker. And if it was 2006, he's the first pick in the draft. Because mm. the game was a little different, right? And this kid is like a long lever, like bona fide SEC badass. Like he's 6'5", 272, like plays like he's 272, 35 and a half inch arms. Like Philip Daniels kind of kind of vibe for me. Like he could probably play at 300 pounds and not lose a lot of speed and agility. Um, he ran a four five one, and his ten yard is a one six two, which isn't the best. But I'm not going to draft this guy and expect that he's going to be a, a nine technique his whole career and justify the the position he's drafted. I think a lot of times we blame these kids. Blame the teams that are drafting them. If somebody wants to draft Trayvon Walker to be just a, a an edge burner guy, you're not going to be happy with the selection. Move this guy inside. Move him up and down the line. If you care about the run game, you can play him in a six technique. You can play him in a five. You can play under. Like he's He can kind of do a lot of different stuff for a team. And then one guy I haven't mentioned yet is Johnson down at Florida State. Jermaine Johnson. Jermaine yeah, Johnson. ACC. You know, like Reed was here when I was watching his tape. I was like, oh, I like this kid. And then, you know, kept going. I saw his senior bowl footage and, you know, like saw that he could turn speed to power. He's got a really nice swipe. Like, is he going to be the, the type of guy that's always going to have to win with his hands to dip and rip and get under people? Because there is a difference between somebody who can just kind of like, uh, uh, you know, Tibbs, he can just kind of run and dip. And this kid is going to be a guy that might get to that off of hand work. Boy, at four, five, eight, six foot five, good 10 yard split. This kid's going to climb, and I don't blame anybody for for snagging this kid in the top 10. Bottom line is, I don't hate any of these kids. Um, well, I mean, you did just grab, like, the the first six-pack of Coors Light you saw from the convenience store. I mean, these guys are I, – I, Josh Pascal. Yeah, you talk about a guy yeah. like Josh Pascal. Yep, you, you talk, talk about, about the Josh, Coors Light yep. at the back of the refrigerator behind the orange juice and the yep, yogurt yep. And, the, uh, and the cake, you know? Why are you leaving Coors Light – in the back of the refrigerator behind the no, nah, it's like it's, it's a great it's a great find. Like I thought I was out of Coors Light, and then wait, oh no, there's one at the back of the fridge. Thank God, I'm I'm saved. And his name is Josh Pascal, and his name also is Coors Light, Golden, Colorado. I've been to Golden. Good, really good, great place. But those are kind of the the edge guys, and I think this class, you know, it's a fit class. Everybody's different. Tibbs is different than Hutchinson, who's different than Karloftis, who's different than Walker, who's different than Johnson. They are literally all different style players. And then you got the unicorn, Josh Pascal out of Kentucky. Exactly. Hey, we've had good luck with edge guys from Kentucky. That's right. You know, Josh Allen and then our guy. Now, my guy's more of like a, like a run stopper, unique right. body. Well, Bud Dupree was another one that I was going to say, but this is maybe your Davis Mills this year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's exactly right. Shout out to you. Listen to the full podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and other podcast streaming platforms. Uh, wherever you want to get the podcast, you can get the podcast. Pretty simple. New episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. Podcasts get pretty wild. This is real tame.